As dusk falls, Jared Otieno heads out onto Lake Victoria. Since he started using an electric motor, he and his team no longer have to breathe in exhaust fumes. And it's not as noisy either. Otieno is one of the few fishermen here who started using an electric motor last year. It's much easier. Before, he was constantly having to change gears. Also, you have to be careful with the propeller, turbine. So when it rotates, it might or may get contact with the uh, manila, this uh, string, or the gear. So removing it, it come cumbersome. With this one, you just do, it's just automatic, it's just come out automatic. The fishermen use solar lamps to mark out the area where they plan to cast their large net. The light slowly attracts the fish to the surface. Then, in the early morning, they pull up the net. The nights are long on the lake. Only after 12 hours do the fishermen return to Niangina Beach in the town of Mbita. Otiena shares the proceeds of the catch with the other fishermen after deducting expenses. He only has the electric motor and batteries on loan from a company called Osobo. Every morning he returns the used batteries and in the evening he receives a freshly charged set. Asobo rents out the e-motors for the equivalent of around 38 euros a month. The batteries cost 7 euros 50 per day. A lot of money for fishermen here. That's a challenge. If we can get uh, less than uh, what we are expecting, then it is a stress to pay or to top up with Asobo. So we have to go to look for the other sources so that we can top up. The Dutch startup Asobo had to do a lot of math to develop this business model. They source the batteries and motors from Germany. Here in Kenya, they have technicians who take care of the repairs and maintenance. They also offer a 24-hour service if there are problems on the water. Uh, the fishermen have to call the rescue number that we can resolve on, on call. But sometimes when the technical issues are not in a position to be solved during that time, they have to, we have to send our rescue boat to, to go pull them back or maybe change something, a component of the engine for that matter. The batteries are equipped with GPS trackers so that the boats can be precisely located in case of emergency. Asobo first started testing its system in 2017, but everything was delayed by the pandemic. In the meantime, more than 15 fishermen have signed a contract with the company. Every new customer receives a free training session. So it depends on In just a few days, they learn the most important things. First, theory, then practice on the water to get used to the e-motor. Coach Joshua Maruka has been involved since the start and understands what the fishermen need. The company will uh, will will uh, will need to to do some modification on it, only the distance that the electrical mobility cover. Like uh, our fishermen, most of them try to go far distance. Asobo is working to improve the situation. It's made contact with companies in Kenya and Uganda that refurbish used batteries. These could be rented out to the fishermen at a cheaper rate. In these second life batteries, we will make them modular so that also we match, we mimic the current operations of our customers. That if, um, if a customer wants to go far, we give them more batteries. Then we charge this recharge fee by battery. Like you want to go far, we give you four batteries. You want to go shorter distance, we give you one or two batteries and you pay for what you have used. Asobo is the first company in Kenya to invest in e-mobility on water and one of the few in general on the country's e-market. Electric mobility is still in its infancy here. There are some electric cars and buses and even some e-bikes. Warren Ondange rides one of them. He's a member of AEMDA, an association that provides a platform for the nearly 20 companies investing in e-mobility in Kenya. The aim is to organize a lobby urging politicians to promote electric vehicles. 
people are excited about e-mobility and the opportunities that it brings, it has tremendous environmental benefits. But unless we have the right incentives to allow um, for the final price and value to the customer to be affordable, then e-mobility might just as well be another illusion that we'll struggle to get towards. Around 25,000 boats are out on Lake Victoria every day. Many of them belong to Kenyan fishermen who use combustion engines, which pollute the lake and harm the fish population. Often the fishermen only get small silver cyprinids from the lake. And their catch quotas have also declined in recent years. Jared Otieno's wife and mother take care of the catch every morning first drying it and then selling it as quickly as possible. The fish are the main source of income for the family of 12. They also use the money to pay the school fees for their four children. And they've even managed to build a second boat. Jared Otiena wants to equip this one with an electric motor too. He has a plan for his family. Okay, my father once was a fisherman, then now it's me fishing, then what of my children? So out of this one, I'm praying, God willing, that my children not to be fishing also. So they should divert to another system. And that's why now I'm supporting an education, provide a good education for from there. They, if they're employed, they can change my, our life. Jared Otieno has already persuaded some other fishermen to switch to electric motors. But he and Asobo are still among the pioneers of e-mobility in Kenya. It will take many more like them to see a benefit to Lake Victoria and its fish.